All right, I want to make a reference here for all the CSS background properties and the specifically the background shorthand property. So I have on my web page over here uh, a list of all of the background properties that you can use and the order in which they're supposed to be written. So background color. Uh, this is the first one, but specifically, more specifically, the first one in the last layer. So what does that mean? Well, it means that as part of the latest CSS, actually going back uh, probably eight or ten years now, you can use multiple images as the background. So if I were to, let's say, use this header area right here, and I wanted to put a background image, I could list off a whole bunch of URLs. I can list one, two, three, and so on, and keep putting URLs in here and putting the paths to the images. And this is the order that they're going to be applied on the page. And we can do this with all of the properties. So individually, I can list off all these properties just like I have here, or if we were to use the background property, this is the shorthand for all of this stuff. Now, you don't have to put everything inside of there, but if you were creating multiple layers, you would have all the properties, a comma, and then a list of the properties you wanted, and then a list of all the properties. And let's say there's three of them, then this would be the place right here that you would actually add the color as the first in the list of properties. So I'm just going to do one layer here, just to start off. So my background for my header is going to be this color. Okay, and there it is showing up. So we've got the background, and this is the color that I want. It's my first property, um, followed by a URL. So I'm going to add an image inside of here. I have this one in my folder. There we are. Now you'll notice when I apply the image, the image is taking up the whole space and this color is not being seen at all because this color is behind any image that I put. That's why it's the last one in that long list is because you start at the top and you work your way down closer to the actual background of the body or the background of the HTML. That would be the the very bottom layer. It's if you were standing on the top of a building looking down the ground level, that's the last thing that you put inside of here. That would be your last background. So because I've only got one, I can put the color first, then my image. Following that, we have background position. So you can change and center, bottom, left, right, top, these are the different values that we can put inside there. First one is horizontal, second one is vertical. If I put center, then center will be used for both. If I put bottom, well that's not really going to work as the horizontal one. Bottom and top are for vertical, left and right are for horizontal. Center works for both. So if I only wrote center once, it's going to apply to both. So let's add that in here. Center, center. So now the image is centered vertically and horizontally. And you can see the second one being the vertical. If I put bottom, you don't see their faces at all. If I put top, you only see their faces. If I put center, then you see a little bit of both. So that's what the positioning properties do. And like I said, if you put center, it does for both, but for the other ones, you need to have the two values. Background size comes after the position. So it has to come immediately after the position and might not be clear from my notes here, but you need to have the forward slash between the two of them. It's kind of like font size and line height. You need the two of them. You need a slash between them. Here I'm doing the position followed by a slash and then the size. My size is going to be one of these three values. So auto is the default, like this. But we can also say I want to contain it. There we are. So it's contained. It takes the smallest size, make sure that it fits inside of here. And then by default, it's going to tile it, which is our following property, repeat. If 
I say no repeat, there it is. Center, center, it's contained, the whole thing's inside there, and I'm not repeating it. If I say cover, then it's going to fill the largest dimension that it can. So it spreads itself out like this. Auto just does its normal size. I'm going to leave as contained just so we can see the background color in this as well and the tiling. So no repeat means one instance of it. If I say repeat X, it's going to repeat in the horizontal direction. Repeat Y will repeat vertically. Now there's only one that fits inside of here, so I'm not seeing it. Or we can say repeat, which will tile both horizontally and vertically. So let's leave it as no repeat for the moment. Um, my border, actually, I'm going to change my border here on the top to be dashed. Let's make both of them dashed. And I'm going to do this because I want to show the background origin and background clip properties. Uh, yeah, we'll do these and we'll come back to the attachment. So background origin, background clip. Background origin is where do you want to start drawing the background image. Our options are content box, padding box, border box. So whether we want to keep the image contained in the content, uh, let's put in one padding, one REM of padding. Okay, so now we're going to make this content box. There we are. If you only put one value, uh, background origin and background clip. If you put one value, the same value gets used for both. If you put two values, the first one is going to be background origin, the second one is going to be background clip. So I've got one, which means it's being applied to both. I'm going to add it twice, just so I can illustrate the difference between them. So content box. This is going to be for the origin this is where I start my background color, my background image. You'll notice the padding is outside of here. The default is padding box. So if I do padding box for the origin, then this is moving to the top corner here. I'm not going to have a space, but my background clip is cutting it off at the content box. So it started measuring things from the outside of the padding box, but it's clipped to the content box. If I go padding box for this, and then content box for that, there we are. Now the clip is clipped to the padding box, which is out here. The content box is the origin. So on the inside of the content box right here, and let's, uh, instead of doing center, center, let's do left top for a position. So we can see the corner where it's starting. Content box, right here, that's on the inside of the padding. That is the point where we're starting to draw the image. The clip is where it's being cut off. If I make both of these padding box. There we are. It moves up to that point. That's where it starts to draw it, and that's where it cuts it off. Now let's uh, move to the uh, sorry border box. That was our last one to show you here. So border box. Right now we've got the origin, so it's starting to draw it underneath that border, but it's clipping it at the padding box. So you can see the top of his hair is being cut off right here. It may be hard to see on your screen, but the top of their hair is being cut off because we're clipping it at the padding box. If we move both out to the border, now the image, you can see little bits of the image are actually going underneath the border. The color's going underneath the border. The white of the image is going underneath the border. And that's what the border box is going to do for background origin, background clip. So you've got the three boxes, border, padding, content. It's just a question of where you want the color to show up, where you want your images to show up. 
All right, so that last property, background attachment, and that's the one that would come here in between the repeat and the origin. We have a few different options here. We can say fixed, we can say scroll or local. Now fixed means the background is fixed and it won't scroll with the content. So it stays in position. If the content's gonna scroll, it scrolls past it. If you say scroll, then the background is fixed relative to the content itself in there. If the content has a scrolling area, then the background will scroll. That's what scroll does. If the content has a scroll space, a uh, scroll widget on the side of it, if the back if the content is scrollable, then the background will scroll with it. Local means it's just fixed. It's not going to scroll at all. Um, sorry. Local means that it's fixed relative to the content. If you scroll the page, the background will stay with the content. So relative to the page, the content's going to move when you scroll. The background will scroll at the same speed along with the content. Fixed, it stays still. The content scrolls past it. So that's what we've got for background attachment. And that's it. That's all the properties. And like I was saying, you can repeat these. You can have multiple background layers. Just put a comma between each one. So if I were doing this, comma, space, there we go. So here's the two, but the first one's not going to have a color. So it would look like this. Here's your first background layer. That would be the top one. And then in behind is this one right here. Okay, so I hope that helps you out. That's pretty much everything that you need to know about CSS backgrounds with the exception of gradients, but that's a story for another time. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you found this helpful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.